Hello viewers, any report that is created is expected to be interactive from the end user's perspective. We have seen various filtering mechanisms in my previous video and today we are going to look at a very special feature which is slicer. Slicers are also used to filter the data but what makes it more special is its look and feel in the report. Slicers are actually displayed on the report page. And in this video, I'll be explaining you on the following topics. How to create a slicer, a vertical slicer, tile slicer, the numeric range slicer, date range slicer, the relative date slicer, relative time slicer, responsive or resizable slicer, hierarchy slicer, and how to sync slicers across various pages. Using these slicers, we can control the visuals that will get affected by the slicer and the sync slicers option to sync the slicer across various report pages without having it duplicated in each page. Subscribe to my channel to get alerts on my new videos on technical front. Now let's get started with a very basic slicer creation. I am using the retail analysis sample file for this video. Please note that I have made some changes to this report to explain you on the various slicer functionalities. In the district monthly sales page, I want to change the page to improve the user experience to view the data by each district. Now let's add a slicer on this page. In the visualizations, select this visual which is slicer. Once I click the slicer, this visual appears on this report page. Let me resize the slicer. In the field section of the slicer, I'm going to add the district field. So all the districts will get populated here in the slicer. Now clicking on each district is going to refresh my report for that particular district. The slicer visual here displays the districts with some checkbox option. And this is called the vertical list style where the districts will be displayed one below the other. This is how we can create a very basic slicer and use it to refresh the other visuals in the report page. Now consider this scenario where I don't want the visual to be like this or to be more specific, I don't want the visual to be like this vertical list. Rather, I want it to be displayed as a tile and clicking on one of them should display the data of that particular district. It sounds interesting, right? Go to format your visual and in the slicer settings, in the style, change it from vertical list to tile. Let me resize the slicer. Okay, now it is displaying it in the tile format. We are not able to see it because it has got the white background. Now let us go ahead and make those changes. In the effects, I'm going to set a background color to the slicer. In the visual, go to values. There you can set a border to the tiles. Also, you can change the background color of those tiles. Now clicking on each tile is going to display me the values of that particular district. Say for example, if I want to select more than two districts, I can just do it by pressing the control key followed with the other tiles, which is going to display me the data of those selected districts. In the field section, I'm going to play some numeric field instead of district. So let me remove this district. And I'm going to place a numeric field, say store number. So now we have the store numbers listed here in the slicer. But I want it as a range of values. So what I have to do is go to format visual. And in the slicer settings, instead of tile, change it to between. This is going to display the slicer as a numeric range. I can either alter the starting node or the ending node and you can see that the values of the start and the end gets adjusted automatically. Furthermore, the visual also gets refreshed. You also have an option to edit the start and the end values 
by entering the values directly. In the format your visual, in the slicer settings, this is how the between style works. We also have got other two styles which are less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. When I give less than or equal to, I will be able to adjust only the end value. And the slicer is going to display all the values from the starting value to the end value that is provided by me. If I change it to greater than or equal to, I will be able to adjust the start node. But the end value remains the same which is going to be the maximum value of that particular field. Date range slicers will come into effect when you make use of a date field. So let's say instead of the store number, I am going to add a date field into this particular section. I am going to add the open date of the store into the field section. And the style is set to between. So in this case, the visuals will get refreshed based on the start value and the end value that we have for this open date. So this is how the date range slicer works. Relative date slicer is yet another interesting feature. Many a times we would want to display the details of the last one month or last one year or last one week. So this is when the relative date slicer comes into picture. So under the visual, format your visual, go to slicer settings and in the style change it to relative date so instead of the date range we are going to see two drop downs here one is going to ask us if it's going to be the last next or this so i'll give last i want to see the data of last 10 years so let me give last here and here we have to enter the numerical value i'm going to give it as 10 and here in the drop down, I am going to select years. We are not able to see any sample data here for the last 10 years. So let me change it to last 20 years. So here we are able to see the data that is refreshed for the last 20 years based on the relative date style. Instead of date, if you are very particular about the statistics at each hour, you can go for relative time slicer where you have an option to select a time to get your visuals refreshed. So in your format your visual, go to slicer settings and instead of relative date, give it to be relative time where it is going to ask you for the last few minutes. Where you can give an option like last 20 or last 100 hours. The sample data does not have any data for the last 100 hours. So this is how the relative time works. I'm going to change the style back to tile and the field to be district. Here I have all the districts displayed in the slicer. As I try to resize the slicer, I can see that some of the tiles disappear. We do have an option to make the slicer responsive to the resize of them. So under format your visual, go to general properties and then go to advanced options and then turn responsive to on. And when you try to resize your slicer, you will be able to notice the difference. We can make the tile slices and the date range slices responsive. Next comes the hierarchy slicer. Hierarchy means we are going to drill down from one level to another. So the field section should have at least two fields. So in the field, I'm first going to add DM. And then I'll add territory under DM. And the style is vertical list. You'll be able to see a drop down 
as well as a checkbox. Selecting the DM is going to display all the values of that particular DM. Else, if you want it for a particular territory, what you can do is you can select it for that particular territory. And all the reports are going to be refreshed accordingly. Let's say I want to change the icon of this particular DM. So in that case, under format your visual, visual, hierarchy, and then under expand or collapse, you can change whatever option you want and accordingly the icon will get changed. Slicers in general filter the visuals in the report page where the slicer is present. Rather, I want the slicer to filter the values in other specific pages of the report. In that case, I can make use of the sync slicers feature. Navigate to the view menu and under that select sync slicers. The sync slicers pane will open up for you. You will be able to see three columns there which are the page name, sync and visible. Page name is clearly the name of the page that we have in this Power BI report. The visible column will indicate in which page the slicer should be visible. In this report, the slicer is visible only in the district monthly sales page. So by clicking on the visible checkbox for the new store, the same slicer will be made available or visible in the new stores page as well. You can select the value that you want in the other pages, but it is not going to sync up with the page in the district monthly sales. Though the slicer is made visible to the other pages, the options that we have selected in the slicer is going to be different in each page based on what we have selected. Now that I have removed the visible from the new store, if you go to the new stores, you will not be able to see the slicer anymore. What if I want only one slicer in this district monthly sales page, but I want the values to be refreshed in the other pages as well. So in that case, in the refresh, just select the pages that you want to be refreshed based on the selection that you make in the district monthly sales page. So if I select a particular territory, the value in the new stores also get refreshed for that particular territory. So these are the different things that we can do with the slicer to improve the end user experience. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned to this channel for more technical videos.